This is it. This is my last day in Tokyo. Tomorrow we fly off for Bangkok, so that's gonna be a more of a travel vlog, whatever the fuck you want to call it. A lot of footage of me on the plane, drawing on the plane. But for tonight, I'm going to finish the left side of that drawing, like I promised. I'm really enjoying working with more watercolor and gouache. And that's something that I started experimenting with the first time I went to Japan. And I honestly don't know why I haven't been doing it more. So again, I'm gonna be doing a little more of that. And while I do this drawing, I'll also talk uh, a little more at length about what this whole trip has felt like in comparison to the other trips, stuff I've learned, uh, ramble a little bit into the mic, whatever. Alright, a whole lot of people are about to walk past me. But I want you to focus on this lady. She's been babbling non-stop and I think she's some sort of beggar or she's trying to get some help for some kind of cause. Her sign looks really well made, so I don't think she's the regular homeless lady, but she just keeps talking over and over again. And uh, I'm sitting at this crossing and I think I'm gonna use her as the beginning of the left side of this drawing. I know the light's a little grainy. All right, we're still, we're gonna start with the champion. My prize fighter, the Stadler 925. 0.5 millimeter pencil with some 2B lead in there. Boom, look at that. All right, where do we leave off? Where do we leave off with this? Oh yeah, I, I didn't show you guys. I made some other drawings here. Um, this one in particular, I really like. Because uh, of these, some of these figures I drew on the train. Anyway. I wish the lighting was better. But it is night time. Someone over there is playing that corny ass um, song. <laughs> it sounds like he's using a recorder. Anyway, I added this creepy guy while the camera was off. I wish I could have recorded it, but I was in the zone. I looked up and this is what's happening in front of me. I have no idea what the fuck is going on. This, I, I can't make this up. I, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they snuck up on me somehow. I have no clue how this happened. Some kind of stop smoking campaign. Oh, so this guy is playing music, this shitty ass music over here, and these guys I think are doing a truth ad. Music for relaxation. They're all leaving. They're leaving me, including Boner Guy. R.I.P. Boner Guy. It is nice to have some good lighting here. All right, what are we working with? All right, what was added? Um. This big blobby face man was added. A few lines here and these things that make this look like a little spine were added. I'm gonna continue with that and 
listen to the sounds of this dryer spinning. Right now I'm content just using this Repi Maru pencil uh, that I imagine some little girl left on a ledge that I got in Kamakura. That was in one of the previous vlogs, the, the Sausage Man. For you true believers out there. It is hard to imagine that this uh, is gonna be my last night in Japan. I've become very comfortable with living here, even though it was temporary. Um, but it's it's a weird thing. Okay, I'm really I'm really comfortable living here, but at the same time, I'm I'm not comfortable with it. It's like you see the same kind of person. In, in droves, so many of them that when you see someone who isn't Asian, you're like, holy shit, this is a this is a big deal. Like if I see a black dude when I'm over here, I, I immediately say, hey, what's up to him? And and I always I always notice like their their eyes light up too. They're like, oh shit, another one, holy shit. And it's um I think fitting in is the thing I end up thinking about the most whenever I come out here. Um, because I, I don't, I feel like I don't, but at the same time, I don't know that they do either. I don't know that uh, Japanese people feel like they completely fit in and totally 100% comfortable in the environment. Um, and that just may be, my, that might be my interpretation of the, of the living situation here. Um, and anyone can prove me wrong on this, but I always feel like, uh, Everyone's kind of closed off and trying to recede into their own digital world, even even deeper than um, in the U.S. here. And again, that idea of conformity fitting in—you see it cracking on the weekends and, and nights, weeknights when people would get so shit-faced, like they get fucking obliterated to a level that we don't even do in the U.S. Um, yeah, and it just makes me wonder. I don't know. This is like a. It's definitely a half-baked thought, but conformity and um, what it means to fit in, I think, might mean something different here because my interpretation is like it's not just you fitting in; it's you um, thinking about how you're perceived in a greater context. And my understanding with is like with, with the Japanese at least traditionally it's like a conservative thing where you're thinking about how your family looks as well that's why like you're referred to by your last name before your first name um, your family name before your given name because like that's that's what matters more it's like at least in the past I would imagine it was less of an individual society uh, I don't know what I'm rambling about what did I learn most of this trip um, I noticed I noticed so many different things, like, I noticed really simple things, like, not everything is super uh, me trying to be profound and failing, like, I learned different things about food, I tried, um, I tried a lot more different foods, I went to different places that are on the outskirts of Tokyo or even outside of Tokyo, I wish I could have gone to some place like Kyoto in the west, but, um, Maybe next time, but I, I don't think there'll be a next time for a while because I, I think I'm, I've had a lot of Japan at this point. Uh, the last few times I came here, I, I did have problems with the conformity, feeling like I was always doing something wrong. I did have that feeling this time as well, uh, feeling like I was doing things wrong somehow. And it's true, you're probably breaking some sort of etiquette at any given time, but I found that this time I just didn't give a, give a shit as much. Um, because I just accept it. All right, I'm a foreigner. I try my best. I speak the language poorly, um, but I try. And um, I just accepted that I'm going to fuck up. And it didn't give me as much anxiety as it did last time. But I did feel... Somehow I did feel more isolated this time around. Um, it's not to say I didn't... Well, I'm, I'm not talking about any of the stuff that I enjoyed. 
What did I enjoy this time around? Definitely the food, um, looking at the people. I met more locals and more foreigners and talked to them more. It was still difficult to break um, break into the foreigners and kind of talk to them because they, they just... I think just really um, exclusive. I feel like they're really difficult to warm up to um, or for them to warm up to you. Um, my benefits of being here, I think, were mostly internal, just giving me, a, giving me time to be away from, be away from home, had me thinking about, about art stuff. Um, a lot of leisure time to think about writing and, and stories. and um, Even this, like sitting here experimenting with this. Uh, I haven't done a drawing like this in a long time. And um, you'd be surprised the kind of things that travel does to your brain. If that's what you're looking for, if you're actively seeking. I think if you live a life where you're actively seeking, trying to be better and, and being creative and stuff like that, you'll find it. Um whenever you're ready for it. What else? Uh, I think it took three times to come to Japan to, to realize like, I, I, I wouldn't want to live in a place like this. Like, I'm, I'm okay for a few days, but like, and I'm, I'm, I really love learning about new cultures and everything, but like, it is so, it is so not a home for me. It's comfortable, but it is not home. I'm ready to uh, try Bangkok and then go back home and, um, I'd love to go to South America and then Africa and then um, Australia or Africa, South America, Australia before I go back to Asia at any point. Um, what else? What other good stuff did I see in Japan? Uh, yeah, there wasn't much culture shock this time, but there, there were just deeper things I noticed. And I was paying attention to um, about the people specifically. I don't think I was watching them as close as I did this time. So that was different. Uh, I'll be talking about this a lot more in, in coming videos and podcasts and shit like that. So just watch out for that. For now, let's finish this damn drawing. Before I go to the final image of this, uh, I want to remind you guys, you can get prints of my stuff on Society6. I am going to try and upload this to Society6 as a print when I get, uh, when I get home. Uh, besides that, if you're interested in buying this, go ahead and shoot me an email or a message and I'll, I'll let you know. If, if you want to buy this original, I'll just slice it out really nice and uh, I'll ship it anywhere. Um, obviously, like you'll have to pay shipping, but um, I really love this drawing, so it's going to be really difficult for me to part with it. But yeah, again, if you want it, let me know. This is it, folks. I have to go get ready for my trip to Bangkok, which I will cover in the next vlog. Thanks for watching as usual. Don't forget to comment and all that shit. If you have questions, let me know. Uh, most of the answers will be provided in the show notes. I answer all those questions there. Now let's get a close-up look at this thing, and then I'm gonna head out. What I look like, a valet? Keep it, it's yours. Hmm?